yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah speech. Right. Speech. Right. No speech prepared. So just a tiny little bit of sort of, um, first of all, welcome to everyone, and it's so wonderful to see so many old friends and new friends, um, people who have seen our movies back in the 70s and 80s, and friends who have make never and helped make them, and those who have never had a glimpse, so this is really great for us. Mm -hmm. And this last period of time has been um, uh, a little bit of a journey. You know, you go back and you read your diaries that you've written 30 years ago, mm -hmm. and it's somewhat daunting mm -hmm. to... Uh, um, we were different people then, yes. <laughs> and um, remembering things that were you know, extraordinary and precious and about that time because during the first trip that we took to Haiti, which was in 1974, and made the film here that's on your right, we used to call it the Top Tops Moving Pictures is the title, but during that time really the work went into the thinking and the planning to go back a year later to do the work for um, Black Dawn. Mm -hmm. and and that was a big trip, right? It was, it was incredible. And we, um, uh, I mean, these paintings have been in my basement for 35 years, luckily away from the light, so they've maintained all of their brilliance. I think they just look so fantastic. And um, we, uh, yeah, we, uh, we've been looking at our, at our diaries and looking at some of the books that were our inspiration for coming here. One of them was uh, the, uh, the Black Jacobins, uh, which is written by C.L.R. James, which helped to, uh, the Black Jacobins was about the Haitian people who uh, overturned the French soldiers and created the first uh, independent black republic in the world. It was an extraordinary event when that took place. And so uh, I was recently uh, interviewed by a, a woman writing a book about films about the, the Haitian Revolution. And she said there are very few of them. And there are very few films, there, there are some books, but there are very few films because to get funding for a film that is basically about black people killing white people, it's hard to get, raise money for it. But, but we, were, we were able in making an animated film to be able to portray the story uh, and, you know, and do it with some of the most incredible Haitian artists of the time that we met in Haiti. And uh, you'll see them there and you can look them up, especially I wanted to point out uh, Andre Pierre over here because um, Which one, Robin? that's the one of Erzuli and Ogun dancing with the rainbow uh, background. And just point out because I have, we, we have some of his work here uh, that he did a huge painting of the voodoo, uh, the gods of voodoo as living, living in one tree. And uh, I want to, I want you all to see that, to, to be aware of the richness of Haitian culture, of specifically of voodoo culture. I mean, we have such a peculiar uh, uh, vision of what voodoo is, you know, voodoo economics and so on and so forth. So that uh, it's really, it, it's an incredibly rich culture that was brought from Africa and recreated between the various tribes that came from different countries. And we, we were really thrilled to be able to have access to that while we were visiting. Um, and this was in the 70s, so things have changed now, but yeah. Uh, it was and, and, and during that trip, so I just got to tell a fun story. <clears throat> so Robin and I are preparing to go down. We're going to spend three months, and we're going to work with 12 different artists, a number represented here. And we had to bring down with us everything, all of our supplies, all the paints and canvases and paper and so forth. And so we had like seven or eight trunks full of equipment. 
And, you know, how do you get it into the country? Well, too expensive to put it on the plane. So we decided that we would send it to the American Embassy. And that when we got there, that's one of the things they do. Without is, telling them. Yeah, we forgot oh to God. tell them that it was coming. <laughs> so um, we, you know, we did write to them after it was all shipped and so forth and said when we were arriving. And they met us. <laughs> They met us at the airport and were very silent. The, the ambassador was just like no nonsense. And we got to the American Embassy and he shut the door behind us and he said, don't you ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> and now he said, gin and tonics on the patio. <laughs> I mean, that, and that was the beginning of, of our journey, but it was a very, um, I mean, we were very serious students of voodoo. Mm -hmm. I mean, we went to, to ceremonies every evening mm -hmm. and then would wake up in the morning and what this said, book by yeah, Maya Darren, book, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Voodoo Gods of Haiti, and yeah, we'd this is a fabulous compare book. the yeah. experience from the night before at the voodoo ceremony and then we'd sit down in our journals and write during the day and which god was it, and how was it different, and what was this manifestation like, and this was all the research for the making of this film. But of course we went way, way deep into uh, voodoo culture and learned so much and, and um, developed such extraordinary respect for the culture and a deeper understanding, which, you know, as you use the term like voodoo economics, it gets mm -hmm. so abused uh, mm -hmm. as an understanding, but such a rich, rich tradition. And, and in Haiti, they say 96% uh, of Haitians are Catholic and 100% are voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. no, very deep. Very and then, deep. then we came back, and then we, we had the paintings but we had to animate them, and we had to move them, you know, 24 frames uh, a second. And uh, we wanted to especially point out the roaring uh, lion back there, because uh, Kathleen De Simone, who some of you might have known, who died recently, was one of our artists, and she created that, uh, that figure. But, um, yeah, so uh, we had, we relied on a number of um, uh, Haitian people in exile in Montreal. We would go up there and hang out with them, and they would advise us on the script. And uh, so it was a it was a joint collaboration with a lot of people, actually. Yeah. So maybe we would start by showing the film and then answer some questions of, uh, if if you have some, and give you a chance to look at these uh, paintings again with an eye after you've seen the film and how and, they're And just used. to say, this is, uh, I, for many of you younger people, you may not know what this machine is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a movie projector. <laughs> the room is able to find it and get it cleaned. Uh, I think the, one of the problems that we're facing is that the the film itself may have, uh, the color may have changed over time, so mm. whatever. It's what we're going to see, and afterwards we'll be projecting the DVD from right here, so you can see what that looks like. Yeah, Mar okay. Margaret and Chris felt it was really important that the original experience, um, which was 16 millimeter, and the way that it was prepared and shot, you, you get a little bit of that experience tonight, though I would say we used to be a whole lot fussier about what we allowed to be shown because uh, this version is quite old, but um, enjoy it. It's